So the Wishmore Pioneer Chronograph, paying strong tribute to watches of old, maybe a bit more of the retro watch from the 70s, a gorgeous dial, playfully uh, using those dials in a different way. What an interesting piece. Well, it's designed by a guy who had no previous experience in watch design, came up with a brand and has created this. It's the first of a new micro brand. And I am excited to share this with you because it's nice to have something slightly different. And from a British micro brand company. What more could you ask for? Hope you enjoy. I'll see you in a sec. So let's begin with the stats and the specs. And inside this box is the watch in question. So this is the box you would get. This is a £210 watch. So bear that in mind throughout this review. And I was going to fly through uh, a few bits in here. You basically do get a two year warranty with this watch. So um, do check out if you hear rattling in the background, that is my noisy neighbor doing some drilling again. And I'm not waiting for him to stop because then I would never make content. That's just how much drilling goes on. Anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah, two year warranty and all the, the stipulations for the warranty are on the website. And I am um, going to get stuck in. Let's have it. Now, I'm going to be occasionally having to repolish this watch as we go, because this is a bit of a fingerprint magnet being highly polished. Um, I weight this watch. Guy Pass assisted me with that. Now, this is an 81 gram watch. So it's as you'd expect for a quartz movement watch that's not too big and on a leather strap. So that's good. The length of the watch is 52 exactly. And we've got a thickness or height of 12 mil, including a slight dome sapphire crystal, as you can see there, nice bit of distortion. Very pretty. Uh, it's a 40 mil case size, excluding any pushers or crown or anything like that. And we've got 20 mil look width, which is nice and easy for strap changes. A really nice, soft, padded black leather strap. Really nice. Genuine leather. It's very soft. And I think it will get even softer and more supple over time. Really nice. So it's black with the nice contrasting white stitching. Really good. He sent me the uh, black on white variation. I like the sort of panda effect. And it looks really nice. But um, there are loads of other colorways to choose from. So do check them out. They're all the same price. And um, so it's all stainless steel case. And like I said before, sapphire. And the movement inside this is the Ronda. It's actually the Swiss parts Ronda, which is an upgrade from the non-Swiss parts variation you can get inside. And it's um, got a four and a half year battery life. And the good thing about the Ronda, uh, what's the code number here? 5021, that has uh, gold plating and 10 jewels and a plus minus 20 seconds a month accuracy. So it's a, a slightly better variation of the same movement, having the Swiss parts. And that's why he went for that one as well. He likes the fact that it's got a really good battery life and, um, and a very good proven reliability. He did debate the uh, Mecca Quartz Seikos and things like that, but you know, there's a good reason why people go a lot for these Rondas because they're, they're extremely good. And the Lumen here is, it's okay. It's not bad at all. You do get BGW9 and I'll just pop a picture up here so you can see it. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. Very crisp, beautiful, icy blue. And it's very sort of slim uh, application, very slim, very small application in the hands and at the 12 and the six. So it's very subtle. But you are limited by the size of the indices at those points, so it's acceptable. You get a nice little date complication there above the six o'clock, which helps balance the dial a bit. So you've got the the uh, chronograph counter. So you start it with a top pusher. As you say it ticks away, and it will count down, count round. So you've got your your regular timer here for um, your seconds, which is always ticking away. And then as this goes round, it count, counts up to thirty minutes worth of uh, timing. So you stop it. Nice positive action on the pushers. And then reset one is that one at the bottom. And as you see, it goes all the way around. It's not a snapback or anything like that, but it's it's nice, very smooth. Really nice mechanical feel to this. And then we've got the push-pull crown. And first pull out is going to be for changing the date. See there, 13, 14, etc. One more pull. And that's for a nice smooth action on the time adjust. And water resistance is acceptable on this watch. Okay. This is one of my things I'm going to discuss later. Look how beautiful high polish, but that is just an absolute magnet for, um, it's going to pick up micro scratches and things almost immediately. Um, yeah, 50 meters water resistance. It's okay to get 
a bit wet. That's the best way to put it. Not Don't go swimming with this watch. And you're not really anyway. It's not that type of watch. It's more of a dress sports watch anyway. Um, so yeah, that's the stats and the specs. I've discussed the movement. You've seen a bit of the loom. Let's see what it looks like outside. So welcome back. This is what it looks like on my uh, seven inch wrist. So it's, it's very long lug to lug, as you can see. Let's get the camera out of it. It's just got a long lug to lug. As you can see, it's sticking out quite a lot there. So I'd say, my opinion, if, if it could have a bit of adjustment to the way that the lug's designed, um, to make it a little bit shorter or taper down a bit more uh, abruptly here so it conforms to the wrist better because... As you can see, it looks like it's sticking out proud there, but that's on my seven inch wrist. But it is very comfortable. It's very, it does feel really good on the wrist. There's no, not sticking into you anywhere. And it is, it, it's very light and it's, it's a good looking watch, very clear and legible um, with those sub dials. But the, um, the hands do disappear a little bit on there. So it's easy for them to quite easily disappear. I'd say maybe a, a thicker sword hands or Dauphine hands um, with Stronger application of loom on there might help, just help it pop a bit more. But it's it's a lovely retro design. So I've been chatting a lot with Richard about this watch, and uh, I said, "What what inspired you? What was your inspiration?" And he obviously got into watches just a few years ago. Really got into it, and he said, "I'd love to make my own watch and design it." And a watch that inspired him, which he really liked the look of, was the uh, Tag Monaco. Uh, and you can see how it's almost like the Tag Monaco. Uh, obviously, a picture popped up here. It's like it's um, made babies with a, an old Delma watcher. So you, if you merge the two together, you've got a bit of retro vintage going on, which is lovely vintage look to this watch. You've got this middle part here. I love it. It almost looks like something you'd imagine on an old 1960s or 1970s sports car from Italy. I mean, that's beautiful. I do think that's really nice. And you don't see that very often. You often always just see round sub dials. Um, and I think it's nice to have two on there because... You don't need any more, really. It's nice to have the, the date window as a clear, separate point on the dial. And it contrasts nicely with the logo at the 12 o'clock. And then we've got this unusual, like I said, like a mini car dashboard layout for, you've got your tekken, tekkens, seconds ticking away there at the 3 o'clock, uh, which is always going. And then you've got your, your th up to 30 minute timer, which is nice. That's all you need. It's, it's a really neat little sports watch. Um, but there's one other thing I'd, I'd like to show you guys. As you've seen throughout, there's been macros popping up. And there's something I I had a chat with Richard and I said, I want to share this with uh, you guys. But I wanted to check with him first, see what the situation is going to be. I've got to show you this. There's something, uh, as you can see there, that's not quite right. And those of you who um, are, are, are quite good at spelling will notice there's something a little bit wrong with the... Uh, the word crystal. Now I did check with Richard to see if he's got an affiliation with Cristal um, or wants to sell um, champagne as well as beautiful watches and turns out that's not the case. It's unfortunately an easily missed spelling mistake. Apparently I'm, not, I'm literally not going to take any credit for this um, as, as a positive. I'm not going there's no bragging rights to this because I'm actually a little bit um, frustrated for, for anyone who makes a tiny 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 mistake. And I just said, is this, is this right? So I sent him a picture via Instagram and said, um, I've done a macro and I've noticed a little error there. And he was horrified. And I checked with him if it's okay again, if I share this with you guys. And he said, no one else has spotted this. I can't believe I've missed it. The factory's missed it. Viewers who have seen this watch on other channels have maybe missed it. Obviously, I haven't watched every review um, as much as I'd like to. But this is micro brand territory for you guys. He's so proactive and he was so on the case immediately contacting the factory that they were working on a solution and to show that anyone who's bought one of these watches already and is unhappy with that situation. He's looking to 
for all future watches get the case back to be obviously rectified to be spelt correctly anyone who's got a watch already uh, to send out a case back with the correct spelling uh, so that could be swapped over if that's something that is something you really wanted to do but I actually said to him I said you know what I think you should leave it because a bit like you know when watches um, have mistakes sorry not watches uh, coins you know royal mint there's a mistake those coins end up when they recorrect it and make make them the right way again the ones that were mistakes actually go up in value so I said you know what when your brand's going to take off which it will these original pioneers which is this the first watch he's made and produced and had design um imagine saying oh, i've got one of the first wish mods, the one with the uh the slight spelling mistake on the back that that's part of the british charm of this watch and that's why i think it's fun to share it because we all make mistakes in life i make one every day <laughs> that's for sure and um and it's not a matter about how you make mistakes it's how you put them right and that is the awesome thing about it, how what's how this has been handled and he's straight on it and it's being honest as well sharing that mistake and that is something that is not only admirable but it's the right thing to do it reinserts the professionalism back into the whole thing because that's what it's all about and his aims for the future are more watches different watches not just sports watches this is the pioneer the first one the pioneer chronograph and he wants to aim to bring everything to the uk obviously it's been designed it's, its foundations were laid here he's named the brand after his first home he bought with his wife in berkshire and it's just a lovely backstory and then we've got the evolution of that and this is part of the journey and it's lovely to be able to share that with you guys and i've really enjoyed this watch and the story behind it and i think it's a fantastic start for a micro brand just just imagine this guys before anyone gets too harsh and judgmental on on the situation is imagine going from being an insurance broker because that's what richard was and then starting a watch company investing obviously a lot of time years of research having no experience in this whatsoever and then two years down the line you are selling watches how remarkable is that that's what i just love to hear and that's why i wanted that's why i reached out to um, richard and said i love a bit of your backstory here i love i love to support british business so i am a, i have my own business and I've, I've got relationships with watch gecko i love to support them and anyone else who i can get involved with it's good to support business uh, especially from your home country as well it's really good so i think this watch is a fantastic start it's got a few little things i think can be worked on and improved and i mentioned them loosely like i said with the hands the legibility and maybe this uh, design around this part with the longer lugs i think that could be worked on but i still think it's a pretty watch and it's an awesome start so thanks again to richard for lending me this watch i'll send this back to you mate and i wish you all the best richard and i hope all you guys who watch this have enjoyed it and are going to support the business. The link to his website is in the description. So thanks again, guys. It's been a real pleasure. All the best, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.